More than 50% of uh, every person that's on their way to their first chemotherapy treatment, 50% or more, on their way to their first chemotherapy treatment, they get nauseous on their drive over to their first chemotherapy treatment because the doctor told them they were going to get nauseous. In other yeah. words, they selected a potential in the quantum field. They focused on that potential to the exclusion of everything else. They had the thought, that's clear intention, and they married that clear intention with the emotion of how they're going to feel. When you think and feel a certain way, you move into a state of being. And they knock their body out of balance just by thought alone. So if 50% of every person on their way to their first chemotherapy treatment get sick on their drive over 50% of the people in this culture can get well on their drive away to on their way to work it's the same exact thing it's just the ex expectation of either choosing in something wonderful happening yes. or choosing in something terrible that happened now in choosing the terrible we always choose the known right mm -hmm. we're always choosing the most we're choosing that known because it's based on our past my, I say, let's expect the unknown, let's expect the unexpected, let's choose a potential in the field that's an unknown and it exists, it literally exists as a possibility. For the most part, you know, if you look at the, at the definition of genes, genes allow us to make proteins. So you have a gene that makes uh, muscle, muscle cells make muscle proteins, they're called actin and myosin. Skin cells make skin proteins, they're called collagen and elastin and uh, stomach cells make stomach proteins, pepsin, etc., etc. So the body's a protein-producing machine. But in order for the body to make proteins for structure and function, the gene has to be expressed to make those proteins, right? So we express 1.5% of our genes. The other 98.5% is called junk DNA. As a matter of fact, if you took a skin cell and you stretched out all the genes of a skin cell, it would be six feet tall. If you took out all the, the genetic material out of your entire body and you stretched it out from end to end, it would go to the sun and back 150 times. If you took all the genetic material out of the 7 billion people on the planet and you scrunched it together, it would fit in a grain of rice. Now, genes are a parts list of potentials. They're libraries of possibilities. Out of the 1.5% of the genes that you express, you're 98% chimpanzee. You're only a few hundred genes away from a chimp. 70% rat. Some more than others, but roughly 70%. People don't understand that genes are not the answer to who they are. You have 100,000 proteins that in your body. You have 40,000 regulatory proteins that make those proteins. So then we should have 140,000 genes that make 140,000 proteins. The answer is we don't. We have 25,000 genes that make that many. So now we're talking about variations, combinations, mm -hmm. sequences, and patterns. And when you look at this more closely, one gene can have 35,000 different variations. Really? So now we're talking about this whole phenomenon that's very nonlinear. So there are networks and components and communities of connections about how genes begin to express themselves. So when, when you confront or address adversity or difficulty in your life, if you're addressing that adversity and doing the same thing that creates the same experience, the same experience produces the same emotion, and the same emotion signals the same gene in the same way. So if you're angry at your ex-husband, if you're judgmental of your co-worker, if you're uh, impatient in, in traffic every single day, then it's the same information coming from the environment chemically. Now, as the organisms in, uh, in evolution, if there's an uh, organism that's embracing cold conditions, or heat, or altitude, or current, or predator and prey, as the organism is exposed to those environmental conditions, they have to change their behaviors in order to survive. They have to adapt. So if they change their behaviors and they have a new experience, a new experience it produces a new chemical expression. So now as the organism begins to embrace the environmental conditions, over a series of exposures to the same environmental conditions by changing their behaviors, the new experiences produce new chemical feedback from the environment that signals the gene. And if it's, if it's cold, the organism grows thicker fur, fur mm -hmm. is a protein. If it's uh, altitude, hemoglobin bonds to oxygen more, that's a protein. Mm -hmm. If it's a current, the bigger tail fin. If it's predator and prey, longer legs. So the bodies begin to adapt to the environmental conditions. So then, 
Yeah, you're living by the same emotions every single day. You're keeping the same genes turned on and the other gene genes turned off, and you're headed for your genetic destiny. Now throw in those limited emotions of anger and, sur and survival and depression and hatred and judgment and unworthiness and guilt. Now you're dysregulating the gene, and now you're more matter and less energy. In other words, the body is becoming more dense. And if the denser the body becomes, the more we're subject to the laws of thermodynamics, which is matter tends to break down in time. Disorder, yes. right? The second law of thermodynamics. Change your energy then. And now if you can really change the level of energy that creates a level of coherence, and you begin to learn new knowledge, you begin to wire it in your brain, you demonstrate that knowledge, you create a new experience, a new experience creates a new emotion. And now you're teaching your body emotionally what your mind is intellectually understood. You're embodying knowledge in that moment. The latest research shows that our genes and our receptors on our cells are at least a hundred times more sensitive to electromagnetism, to electricity, yes. to energy, than they are to, than to chemistry. And that when you get the hair on the back of your neck standing up and you feel empowered and you feel enriched and you feel you know, uh, enthusiastic, boy oh boy the cells are getting new information in that moment. You're no longer, you've come out of your resting state and you go from particle to wave. And when your heart opens the field goes from a few inches around your body to nine meters around your body. Now you're saying there's potentials in the quantum field that I want to tune into but in order for you to do that you have to emulate the divine. I'm in such an interesting place because I, I, I never thought that I would see what I'm witnessing in my lifetime and the way people are engaging in this work. In fact, uh, it's like the four minute mile. You know, mm. uh, the four minute mile is just a barrier of consciousness. And, and now I'm seeing people, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, with stage four cancer or Parkinson's disease or lupus or tumors or whatever. Uh, it, it, they, they, they stand in front of an audience and they, they say, uh, I'm completely cancer free. And they tell their story and it's not glamorous, I want you to know. They've lost everything. They've lost their job. They had bankruptcy. They were sick. They lost people. I mean, they were challenged and they kept doing the work. They could have said, I don't feel like it. I'm too tired. I'm too sick. Mm -hmm. It takes too long. I have too many things to do. They never excuse themselves from, from, from that effort. And so when you witness that in an audience, again and again, again and again and again, and again yeah. not only are you piercing a veil of consciousness like the four minute mile that allows other people to do it, but it's not only in the field, but you're witnessing the evidence and you cannot go back to being the same person again. So the woman is 68 years old. She has Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. Her face was paralyzed. She couldn't do many things. She could barely speak. And now she's standing on the stage telling her story and she's jumping up and down. And you have to think, well, if it happens to her, it could possibly happen to me. So then there's a new normal that's beginning to take place, a new standard uh, where people are beginning to go, it is possible. Now I understand that I can upregulate new genes and downregulate old genes. Now I can rewire my brain, but I'm not doomed to this. And so, so when just like a just like a, a, a infection spreads amongst the community and creates a disease, I believe that health and wellness can be as as infectious as disease. And you get enough people together, uh, you start seeing those miraculous things. And so, I believe now in watching people that every time somebody makes the effort or has a transformation, that information is in the field. It's in the quantum. But at the same time, it's also being spread in three-dimensional reality because the evidence is here. So we have the measurements to prove it, we have the people's uh, experience to prove it, and we have momentum. Mm -hmm. And so some people, mm -hmm. the, the true, true uh, uh, pathfinders, the trailblazers, yeah. some of them it took them three years to reverse a genetic condition that the doctor said was impossible to uh -huh. change. Mm 